Omar, how are you doing today? You're doing good? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I had a question today. Um, well, you know, you know, I don't want to talk to you. I really don't. I don't think there's a lot of confidence in the oil and gas industry to invest anywhere in North America, including the United States. Here, Polyev government would respect Albertans. Um, respect them not only as individuals, but also as the hard workers that they are. What do you have to say to people who feel that way? No, I spend a lot of time in Alberta. No, that's not true at all. Was it about science or was it about political science? Like, what's the difference between four weeks ago and just this week? Well, you should listen to the 10 minute speech I gave about a week ago. Hey folks, William Diaz here with Rebel News. Today I head on to Parliament to ask Conservative MPs and Liberals MPs as well some questions about the oil and gas industry in Western Canada, about Alberta's relationship with Ottawa, since we all know that Justin Trudeau believes that Quebecers are far superior than Western Canadians. He stated that uh, years ago. Take a look. Regardez, le Canada fait dur maintenant parce que c'est des Albertains qui contrôlent notre, notre agenda communautaire et socio-démocratique. Ça marche pas. Est-ce que le Canada est mieux servi? Quand il y a plus de Québécois au pouvoir que quand il y a plus d'Albertains au pouvoir? Ben, je suis libéral, alors c'est sûr que je pense que oui. Certains, quand, certainement, quand on regarde euh, les grands premiers ministres du 20e siècle, les seuls qui ont vraiment tenu le coup, c'était des députés du Québec. C'était Trudeau, c'était Mulroney, c'était Chrétien, c'était Paul Martin. Alors, tu sais, on a un rôle, on a ce, ce pays, le Canada, est à nous. I will also attempt to ask Ryan School about his authoritarian totalitarian arrive can happen about his COVID-19 measures. So let's head down there right now. You know, the liberals often talk about how you need to be environmentally friendly, right? How we need to make sure to um, be careful with climate change. I'm sure you agree with that and I agree with that as well. Uh, however, because of the liberal policies, we are forced to buy oil from totalitarian and authoritarian regimes. So why do you refuse to help our oil and gas industry in Alberta? We have a great minister, he's called Jonathan Wilkinson, so he'll be able to answer your question. But what are your thoughts on that issue? Thank so, you. As I said, are you not able to end, end handle two issues at a time? Well, why won't the Liberal government, you know, stop implementing a carbon tax, stop Im implementing policies that make it so that Canada is forced to buy its oil and import oil from totalitarian regimes overseas? Well, I come from an oil producing province. We, we uh, are producing about as much, I think, as as the market can bear, we've seen significant investment, um, but we got to lower we got to lower emissions, like wherever we can find them. I just came from Port of Basque, and uh, you know, let me tell you, the damage out there is real. And if you talk to fishermen, they know from their catch, they know from the fish that they catch, that fish are moving, lobster are moving, like the water's getting warmer. Mm -hmm. And we got to do something about it. And you so know. they know, it. like they know it. It's, it's, you know, I cut, like I said, it's not easy in provinces like mine, an oil producing province, but at the same time, feeling the brunt of a changing climate. It's, this is not easy. If we really want to reduce our emission, why don't we use our clean oil and gas in Alberta instead of having to buy from totalitarian regimes that then we need to ship the oil from Saudi Arabia to Canada. So what policies, what bills, what, what concretely would the conservative government do to make sure that that is actually something we can do? Well, it starts with getting rid of the no pipelines legislation and the no tanker legislation that Trudeau brought in and the 10 years of uh, process that it takes now for capital to go through in his mm -hmm. intentionally bureaucratic uh, environmental review process, which is really meant to drive capital out of this country, which he has been successful at doing. Yeah. And the result of that is that I don't think there's a lot of confidence in the oil and gas industry to invest anywhere in North America, including the United States with what Joe Biden's done on pipelines as well. So it's going to take a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, confidence building when we get to, uh, mm -hmm. to government under Pierre and uh, to get the industry and the capital that goes with the industry back in order to invest in it. You know. I think uh, the, the biggest issue is the federal government has the power under Section 92 of the Constitution uh, to build critical infrastructure uh, across borders. And personally, I believe that's what we should be doing. Some, some of the projects that, um, that our leader spoke of on his campaign were the Beta Nord offshore oil project in, off the coast of uh, Newfoundland. And then you also have the, um, the, the Energy East Pipeline, which was always a good project, which would have brought Alberta crude to ports in St. John and Montreal. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's natural gas opportunities in the country. We have the third largest oil reserve in Alberta. 
yeah. we need to get pipelines and infrastructure. We're not uh, cl the climate change agenda is really hurt hurting Canadians, and it, and it's one of the biggest reasons why Albertans have been so disenfranchised. I think I've covered some of those, some of the projects that have sort of been on the radar of the Conservative Party of Canada. Well, I, I think it's what he's been talking about all the way along is, uh, you know, we talk about banning, uh, you know, dictator oil and sort of this uh, oil that's far from uh, promoting of, of human rights. And mm -hmm. uh, like, if you look at what Canada does and even a, a reflection on what Norway does, it's considered one of the most uh, environmentally sound countries in the world. They don't have any debt. They have a trillion dollar fund that they do a lot of great things with in Norway. Well, that should be Canada times 10. We have those same resources. We do it. Uh, no one does it better than Canadians in developing it uh, uh, cleanly and also with uh, respect of human rights and all the rest of it. So Canada should be leaders in uh, natural gas and, and oil production, uh, not, not followers like the, this current prime minister has put us in that position. One last thing, we know that the UCP leadership race is almost over in Alberta and Daniel Smith is one of the favorite uh, ones to win. We know that she wants to implement a Sovereignty Act. What What are your thoughts on uh, the Alberta Sovereignty Act? I, I won't comment because I'm not a, an Albertan, but uh, I'll say uh, we're, we're kind of watching. We're close neighbors. My riding just goes right up to the border of Alberta. So we're watching closely with what happens over there, but uh, we'll see what the results are. Omar, how are you doing today? You doing good? I'm good, thank you. So I had a question today. Um, you know, you know, I don't want to talk to you. I really don't. Why don't you want? Why don't you want to talk to Canadians I'm that gonna, you're supposed I talk to represent? To Canadians every day. No, you don't, because we've got a million viewers watching us on YouTube, and you absolutely refuse to answer the question. Why do you have so much contempt I, for conservative Canadians? I I don't want to talk to you. You don't want to? No. Is it because it's too hard? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> too difficult. Why, why do you have so much contempt for conservative Canadians across the country to the point that you refuse to even address them I, when we I, ask questions? I love Canadians. It's just you do so much harm to Canadians with your misinformation. What, what did I say was misinformation? Name me one thing. But I wish you well one with thing. your career. I wish you all with your career because this is a great job for you. <laughs> this is incredible, folks. Name me one thing that was misinformation. Just one. He can't even say it. Do you have any last words for us, uh, Mr. Al Jabra? Have a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Thank you, sir. You too. Why won't the Liberals drop the policies that make it so that it's so hard for the oil and gas industry? Like following me, this is like the third time you guys are like second time, sir. my stuff or so. Second time, third time. We're, we're asking everyone. We're asking Omar Al Jabra. But anyways, I'm going to finish my, my question. So, excuse me, excuse you know, your, your policies make it so hard so that the oil and gas in industry in Alberta aren't able to provide clean oil and gas for all Canadians. So why won't you stop your policies that make it that the oil and gas industry in Alberta is suffering and that we need to get our oil from totalitarian regimes? I'm a big supporter of the Canadian energy industry. I always have been. It's awesome. I love the workers out there that work hard in Alberta and all the provinces. You, you love the province of Alberta? All of them. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. How would the Liberal Party react if Daniel Smith invokes the Sovereignty Act? Oh geez, I don't know. I mean, that's 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 way too hypothetical, and I don't want to be presumptive and talk about an election or not an election, but a leadership review that is yet to happen. Sure. I'm All right. Gonna, I won't. I won't do any favors to anybody by interfering in that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Of course. One hundred percent. And also, we see, you know, the the, the sovereignty is being backed by some Albertans because they feel like the links between Alberta and Ottawa has, has been broken. Ottawa doesn't respect Alberta anymore. The Liberal Party doesn't respect Albertans anymore. What do you have to say to people who feel that way? No, I spend a lot of time in Alberta. No, that's not true at all. And we have a great deal of respect for their jurisdiction and for, for their ability. I mean, they built one of the great, you know, industries in, in this country. And we need those workers, frankly, who built up that industry now to start helping us with lowering emissions. They're the only ones to do it. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time in Alberta. So do you feel they're wrong for feeling that way? Hmm? Do you feel they are wrong for feeling like Ottawa oh, let no, them down? In terms of how people feel, I think it's... But in terms of how we feel, in my case, is that, no, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Alberta. Actually, you know what? Myself, and I think anyone else, all Albertans, we haven't seen yeah. a, a draft of it. So once we okay. see it, we'll take a look at it. But uh, so far, we haven't seen it. Well, I'd like to actually see the act before I really pronounce on mm -hmm. it. I mean... Uh, my view is that, uh, generally, is that uh, we have mechanisms in the Constitution to allow you to get the same power, use mm -hmm. the same type of things that Quebec has done, which yeah. to me is a notwithstanding clause. So if you have a piece of legislation that you feel is um, 
something that uh, the federal government has done or the mm -hmm. Supreme Court has done that you don't like. You could always bring in a piece of legislation and try and instill it with it, the notwithstanding clause, and see what happens. And yeah. that, to me, that's the constitutional way to deal with it. You know, Alberta, a lot of Albertans are feeling betrayed by a Trudeau government. You know, they feel that the Trudeau government let them down. Trudeau even once said that Canada belongs to Quebecers, and he said it would be better in the government if we had more Quebecers than Albertans. What would a conservative gov uh, government, if elected, do to restore the trust Albertans have in Ottawa? Yeah, that's important because I hear that uh, quite often from my constituents. And uh, yeah, you're from Alberta, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so a uh, Pierre Polyev government would respect Albertans, um, respect them not only as individuals but also as the hard workers that they are, and respect the, uh, our energy industry. And that's one of the biggest concerns that we have as Albertans that uh, you know you have a, a government in Ottawa that's actually trying to shut down the industry and reduce it, and it, it, it hurts individuals, but it's, it hurts them being able to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. A Polyev government would actually support the industry and get that going again and allow people uh, to have great jobs. And how would it support the oil and gas industry in Alberta? I, I think one of the first things we can do is just get rid of C69. Um, that's a bill that uh, uh, you know, the Trudeau Liberals have brought in. It, it's hurting investment into the oil, oil sun sector. It hurts not being able to uh, build new projects. It, it deters companies from uh, building new projects. So that alone, getting, scrapping that, mm -hmm. working with our Indigenous communities, building new projects, will get uh, uh, you know paychecks to Canadians. What would a Polyev government do if elected its power to restore the Albertans' trust in Ottawa? Well, he would uh, have Albertans' backs. And part of that is to reverse the disastrous policies of this government, policies uh, that have hit Albertans' heart in terms of the anti-energy policies of this yeah. government, uh, that have cost uh, tens of thousands of jobs, uh, have resulted in uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of investment that has mm -hmm. dried up. I think the broken link between Alberta and Ottawa is that the um, natural resources industry is booming, had always been the backbone of, of what's brought in Canadian revenue. And I think the Trudeau government has, their climate agenda has basically closed out that industry and it's made Albertans feel disenfranchised and disillusioned by their government because oil and gas have played a major role in our country and Albertans know that and I think if a Polyev government is going to support infrastructure to build pipelines to get you know so like right now we've got Alex we've got we've got Putin supplying our Western allies mm -hmm. with energy this is something we have right in Alberta so that's one of the ways I think the Polyev government will will bring Albertans back into the fold and make them feel like they're extremely relevant like they've always been in our country. Well I think Pierre has shown that he's got broad support across the country not just in Western Canada like CBC and others were trying to say so I think uh, one thing that Pierre's been solid about he supports all Canadians and all Canadians freedoms and, and again that's why I was behind him as leader it's uh, it's gonna he's gonna be a uniting force for the country as opposed to the current Prime Minister who divides and uh, it's sad that he's ruining our country, but that's uh, that's his way that he wins elections. And uh, again, we just we need uh, Pierre Polyev as a, a leader of our country. Well, we'll do the right things. We'll put the economy back where it's supposed to be, and we'll put Canadians back where they should be in charge of their own lives, and uh, have the right to exercise their freedoms that come with our democracy and our charter. The main issue is getting uh, oil and gas to tide water, and. Me being an Atlantic Canadian, I'm a big supporter of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Liberal government through their policies forces me to heat Saudi Arabian oil in my yeah. house. We don't have natural gas. Well, we do have some natural gas that comes into Nova Scotia and a pipeline on frack gas from the U.S., but it goes only for industrial use. So I think getting the number one thing is to get, get Alberta resources uh, to Tidewater to understand that natural gas is one of the great things to reduce the carbon footprint of India and China. We need to find ways to do that. If you really care about the environment instead of taxing people, why don't you just get a less carbon intensive mm -hmm. fuel to the countries that need to need to grow their economies using energy. Uh, they say they have a great why, why, why did you cancel the, the, the Arrive Can app? Why did you cancel the Was it about science or was it about political science? Like what's the difference between four weeks ago and just this week? Well, you should listen to the 10 minute speech I gave about a week ago. I'm asking you right here, like, was it just political science? Was it because you saw that the polls were favorable to Pierre Polyev and you were scared of you losing some votes from uh, the Canadian voters? I believe you deserve the uh, good answer, and I suggest you look at the answer I gave in 
last week. I spoke about 10 minutes about that important question. Are you satisfied to see that elderly Canadians had trouble getting back to their country because of your authoritarian, totalitarian Arrive Can app? Is this something that brings you joy when you work here? So as I said, uh, I know you want to do a good job. You want to have the complete answer. So I suggest you go back to... Well, we're walking here together. About a week ago. It's, it's all on YouTube and you can find it on the Parliamentary Affairs uh, Uh, network. Okay, well, right now you're walking here, so let me ask you again. Are you proud of yourself for having blocked elderly, el elderly Canadians from having entered their country because of your authoritarian Arrive Can app? You know, you're asking great questions. As I said, and I'm glad to repeat that, if you want to have the full answer, and I think you deserve to have the full answer, you should go back to the speech I gave about a week ago. It's a 10 minute long speech, but it's very detailed and you get all the right answers to your excellent questions. Perfect. Well, have a good day, sir. If you find value in what I do, you want me to continue to be able to ask politicians the tough questions that, while mainstream media reporters will never ask because they're so afraid of losing their funding, please head on to ottawareports.com and consider making a donation. That way, I will be able to come right here on Parliament Hill and ask the tough questions that mainstream media will never, ever ask.